maybe we've been a little bit stuck up. We've been checking out indie games and running around showing you the PC LAN area, the custom case building, but it is kind of fun to walk around and look at the giant Ferraris of packs, the big massive booths where people are spending so much money you could buy a few houses for what some of these things are costing. Behind me, the Twitch booth is a contender for the biggest, and I think right now what we're gonna do is walk around the show and try and figure out just which booth is the biggest. Wildstar definitely takes the cake for the most colored screens. It's not the biggest, this is the thing they had at PAX East, I think, but it's pretty enormous. Goes up to the roof, goes fancy thing on the top. Yeah, yeah, that's lots of money. In terms of sheer size, Microsoft absolutely has to take the cake with the Xbox One space, which has Battlefield 4 and Titanfall being shown in it. And you know what? They may be a big giant publisher and people give them a bit of crap, but I'm really impressed by what they've done at this PAX. Instead of having some ornate structure with colored lights and screens all over it and emblems and stuff, they've just had, they've cleared out a giant space, they've put up a bunch of TV screens, and they're just getting as many people to play the games as possible. I respect that. I think that's a really nice way of doing it. It's more about what PAX is about playing the games rather than seeing who's got the biggest. And in contrast, we have the Wargaming booth, which again covers a huge amount of area, but less of it is devoted to actually playing and more of it to a kind of ornate structures, which is a different way of doing it. It's a definitely an expensive way of doing it. I'm not sure if I respect it as much as what Microsoft has done, um, but they certainly take the cake for massive screens, and it's clearly working because people are attracted to this kind of thing. They've got the swag desk in the middle. People are lining up for that. People are lining up to play the games, so that's working. Sega is making a massive play for having the most square footage on the show floor. But it's kind of all broken up into little pieces. I can't find the focal point of the Sega presence. There's a giant sign hanging above the place. There's a lot of places to play, broken up into lots of different little games. I've got Rome, Total War 2 here, a couple of games I haven't heard of. Um, and it's generally enormous, definitely not the most striking of the massive booths though. Nintendo's almost gone low key this year. I don't quite get it. There's no giant hanging Nintendo banner above their presence, just a bunch of their games, which is nice. You want it to be less about the publisher and more about the actual product, so that's fun. They've also created a space in which you can walk in and be exposed to a lot of different games. It's a lot of fun. I like their space. I like what they've done with it, making it less about their giant brand and more about the games that people actually want to play. Bethesda always has a massive presence at these shows. They're a big, big company, but they were kind of surprising this PAX Prime. To find them, you had to go right to the edge of one of the halls, but when you did, you realized they actually have a huge amount of square footage. They've split it between the Elder Scrolls Online and Wolfenstein New Order. They're both looking pretty sick. They've got a giant screen up. There is a lot of space devoted to lines, though, to be honest. There's people just spending a huge amount of time in the Bethesda space just lining up. They do have a lot of PlayStations, I like that. When I say PlayStations, I mean places where you can actually play their games. It feels like a nice balance between showy and play. So they rate pretty highly in my book. Right next door to Bethesda, you can find NVIDIA. They've got a huge amount of space. It's a giant square between uh, Dying Light and Bethesda. It is really, really enormous. I mean, but to be honest, it's a really dark place. It's not particularly inviting. They might have, could have gone with some more green lighting in the place just to make me kind of want to get in more. But what they have done really nicely is devote a hell of a lot of the space to playing games. And you'll, he you'll hear me just coming back to this over and over again. I really respect it when a publisher or a developer or even a technology house as NVIDIA is, devotes a lot of space to just playing, not to show. And while they do have some really crazy booth structures around the place, in the center of it all, it's just a lot of people playing games and playing with some cool new NVIDIA tech. This is the opposite of what I was just talking about. It's a big box. It's got shiny lights, big banners, big black instructions of boothness. But you can't see into it. You don't know what's going on inside. If you peek under a banner, you can see that there's a large line of people sitting down, playing on 3DSs and phones, waiting to get into the demo. It feels to me like it's a little bit against the spirit of PAX to put something in a big box and not let anyone on the outside see what's going on inside. So honestly, the Black Flag booth is probably my least favorite so far. And it's the same thing on the other side. A big black box with a big black banner and I can't see what's going on inside. I really, really just don't like this style of booth. Unknown Worlds ever does something like this. I want you guys to all find me and slap me. The PlayStation space is right next to Microsoft's spot and they've kind of done a similar thing. They've put out a whole bunch of stations where they can play 
and there's not too much fancy crazy stuff going on. So I like this too. There is still a line in the PlayStation space, but at least I can see into what is going on. It feels less like a bunch of people trying to get into a scary private club and more about just sharing a gaming experience. There's just a whole bunch of games going on in there, a whole bunch of titles being played. That's fun, that's what PAX should be about. So we've seen a lot of big boobs and it's time to crown a winner. There's a couple of other ones we didn't see, but they're, it's all right, they're not so massive. We've got most of the major ones. People are gonna give me a lot of crap for my decision, but I'm gonna give the Mega Booth Award to Microsoft for their Xbox base. Why? Because they've taken the biggest amount of square footage and they filled it with playing games. They've trusted EA's Battlefield 4 and Respawn Entertainment's Titanfall to let the, talk, let the game do the talking for them. They haven't relied on creating a big, crazy space that messes with your spatial awareness with crazy lights and darkness and lines as if they're for a nightclub. They've just put the games in there. They've got people having fun, big screens so you can see even if you're waiting in line or if you're just walking outside the booth. PlayStation did a similar thing. They had a lot of space and they filled it with games, but if this is a, an award for the biggest and baddest mega booth, then I'm gonna give it to Microsoft simply because their space is about twice as big as Sony's.